Today marks two months since my aortic valve replacement surgery. And um, just want to spend a few minutes, hopefully a few minutes, hopefully I can get this condensed and just talk about what's been going on since my last video a couple weeks ago. And then maybe look back at the whole thing with some perspective. So again, two months, so eight weeks. Uh, and if I look at my watch, I was still uh, in, in process of uh, actually having my valve put in at this point. So very odd to think about. Seems like, a, you know, years ago and yesterday at the same point. So, uh, so let's just jump in. So what's been going on the last couple weeks? Um, I've got a few different notes that I'll kind of walk through, but the first one will be exercise. So since the last video, I, I just had my orientation at rehab. Uh, I have not started that yet because I'm still waiting on uh, the spot to open up, which did open up. I got that call yesterday, so I'll begin that on Monday. Uh, and so I will go uh, to rehab from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. roughly on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, starting next week, and it is a 12-week program, so that should take me through the end of the year. Uh, I'm very excited about that because um, when I talk about my exercise, I've still been very cautious, uh, really only walking. I've walked faster uh, since I, I went to the rehab at times and pushed myself a little bit more, um, but then I've, I've kind of pulled back in the last you know, few days and found a good rhythm for that. So when I initially had come back from the uh, the rehab orientation, the nurse had said it may be good to take it easier and not walk quite as much. And so I thought, okay, maybe, but I feel, I feel pretty good. Uh, and so, you know, one of the things she did tell me though on the other side was I can push my heart rate to 150 beats per minute and it would be, you know, in the safe range. And so I started doing that uh, and, and walking, um, you know, more speed, more hills, that kind of thing in the neighborhood um, and, and really pushing myself. And I still never got really close to the 150 beats per minute. But in the last few days, I've decided, you know, I, again, I want to be more cautious. And so this week I've fallen into a little bit better, I think, rhythm of what I'm doing for my exercise. And so that what that looks like is I get up and every morning, 7 o'clock, I'll go walk. I like to go to the park or just out in the neighborhood uh, and walk for an hour, which I'll get three and a half to four miles, somewhere in that range, uh, just with a, you know, pretty casual pace. And then... I may walk after lunch, depending on uh, the weather. It's been a little bit hot, so I haven't done as much of that. And then still after uh, dinner at night, as the sun goes down, I get out and walk uh, for about 30 minutes then. So that's that's what my uh, exercises look like. Still no lifting of any kind. I um, just want to make sure I'm doing that wisely and protecting uh, you know, chest and everything that goes with that. I mean, I think everything's... Healed there as far as the bone goes, but I want to make sure I, I ramp it up in the right way, which rehab will help me do. Uh, so I'm very excited to start that next week, and I'll, I'll have some updates um, <clears throat> from what rehab looks like. But that's really been my exercise. Um, you know, I've, I've been now, this is the end of week two to be back at work. Uh, and as I mentioned in the last video, my first two weeks are half days, uh, and I'm working remotely. And then starting next week, I'll go back to full days. Still 100% remote for at least the next month, um, just because my commute's about an hour, hour and a half, depending through traffic and all that stuff one way. Uh, and so I want to make sure that I have the stamina to, to make that happen. And so my manager's been great about that uh, and to allow that. So I'll start four days next week, but the half days have been great because I've been able to work in the morning and then take it easy in the afternoon, which has been been helpful. So, so that's what work looks like. Um, pain in case you're wondering uh, pretty much no pain i have had uh again more in the chest where i'll, I'll feel a twitch or maybe pain discomfort but i think that's again goes to more of just uh, mobility and moving more um and so you know, because I, after i walk i always do stretches and you know get my arms working and that kind of thing as far uh, and so i think that kind of tweaks some things um and i've also not been uh, as cautious when moving things like bringing groceries in or picking up a laundry basket and so I'm just moving in different ways but again uh, no pain management has been zero I haven't had to worry about any of that 
another thing I've noticed in the quote pain region is in just in the past few days that my scar has uh, kind of felt tighter. Um, so I guess that's all part of the healing process with scar tissue and all these things. And so at times, once if I'm sitting down and I stand up, I'll feel kind of a stretch, uh, which feels a little odd. But um, again, I think that's all normal, nothing that I'm really concerned about. Um, but that's really it as far as pain. I mean, there it's completely gone. I mean, I, I'm going to feel it more once I start doing rehab and, and working more of my upper body, I know. But that's soreness due to exercise, not from the, the surgery. So, so that's pain. Um, I think the biggest kind of happening uh, in the past couple weeks uh, happened this past Friday. So about a week ago, um, I, I was just sitting still, and again, I can I can hear my valve clicking, and I would notice every fourth or fifth beat, it would click click, and that fourth or fifth beat fifth beat would be click click, uh, and it would do that kind of almost all the time, every fourth or fifth beat or when I would stop and notice it, you know, once it, when I was walking, that wouldn't do it. It was a pretty solid, solid beat when my heart rate was up. But as I would sit and cool off, I could hear that. And so that happened, uh, started happening on Friday and um, happened, really has happened since then more or less. But um, w the other thing I noticed is that my, my watch, which is a, a Pixel watch, which is uh, the Google watch that's linked into Fitbit, uh, my sleep at night, it wasn't giving me sleep stages. And so it wasn't reading everything. And I think that had to do with the fact that my heart rate wasn't proper. Um, and it was a little bit of a flutter here and there. There was nothing that, that had ever popped up that you said, hey, you know, you need to be concerned about this on my watch. But again, that's just a watch. But I noticed it wasn't doing that for the weekend. I talked to my friend who um, uh, has, has has been a nurse and um, actually done some uh, cardiac work as well as he uh, also uh, sees a cardiac cardiologist himself uh, for his own condition but uh, I talked to him about it on Sunday and um, you know he looked at it and kind of told me he said probably what it is is a, a PAC or I think it's premature atrial contraction he said that you know it's very common um, you know especially you know in general, but especially after surgery, uh, and you know, just to, to pay attention. So I didn't have any uh, symptoms there, you know, no tiredness, no any of that. Um, but I could hear it, uh, and that's what I, would, I told him, and, and you know, told other people is, if I could not hear my heart and the, and the valve ticking, I would never notice it because I feel completely fine. My heart's not racing. It's just uh, I'll hear that that flutter in the in the valve. And so I sent my cardiologist a message um, and just kind of let him know. And so exchanged a couple messages. All that led to yesterday, um, I went in and uh, got a monitor. So I'll be wearing a monitor for the next two weeks so that way they can watch everything. I mean, for the fact that it wasn't a very urgent, hey, you need to come in right away, it does feel like this is something that's normal. Uh, again, still no symptoms, doesn't uh, impact me on my walking or any of that stuff. But I will be wearing this for the next couple weeks. I'll pop a picture up of that and popped it up already. Uh, the monitor is um, not very cumbersome. Um, you know, you can kind of see it through my shirt, um, but it's it's basically it has a uh, a transmitter that you wear kind of on a necklace and then three uh, patches and some wires. And so that does change a little bit of showering and sleeping because now I have a contraption on me yet again. But um, I feel good about it because it, it's going to give them a real deep look at what's going on. Um, so I'll do that for two weeks and then mail it in and they'll read that off. Now at the same time, with starting rehab next week, um, the entire time I'm in rehab, I will be, I will be wearing a monitor as well so they can live monitor me uh, and the cardiologist will see that as well. So that may speed this up or change this. I may not have to wear this for two weeks because they may be able to see it then. I don't really know. Um, but that's just, you know, kind of where that is. Again, I can hear kind of a little double click, but don't feel any different. Um, but just out of abundance of precaution at this point, just like everything else I'm doing, uh, went ahead and got this. So, um, <clears throat> so that's what's happening there. Um, 
INR checks. I had one done this week um, and I was 2.1. So it's a little bit lower than uh, where my nurse has been trying to keep me closer, you know, right above 2.5 to 3 is where she's been trying to keep me. Uh, she likes to keep me a little high, just higher than, you know, maybe normal, just so that way uh, if I do eat something or, or whatever uh, that counteracts it, uh, something high in vitamin K, it, you know, it, it still gives me uh, a good number. But all that's good. She thinks it, it could be part of the fact that I've, I've started gaining my weight back. I've gotten more onto my regular diet now with, with the greens that I'm eating. So <clears throat> really no change. Uh, and so she, well, I'm going to go back next week uh, for, my, for another INR check just to see if that <clears throat> is staying you know, consistent and then hopefully like I mentioned last month I'll you know or last video that I'll move to a month out to check it but but that's been fine um you know as far as taking the warfarin it, it hasn't been an issue for me at all um it has been I won't say a challenge but it has been a moving target to get my INR where they want it with my dosage um but it hasn't been dangerously high or dangerously low uh, and all it means for me is taking a different dosage here or there um, with a pill. So that's it's, it's actually been no uh, issue at all for me. Um, but we're just trying to get that, you know, squared away, which I think is pretty normal in the early stages, trying to figure out where the dosage needs to be. Um, I did have a couple of little cuts this week on my hands from just doing different things um, and no significant bleeding. But, uh, you know, the difference would be before I was on the warfarin, Probably I could have just taken a, a paper towel and wiped the blood and it would have been fine. Uh, but I you know, put a Band-Aid on it because it didn't want to clot up right away, obviously, uh, which is a good sign. That means that the warfarin is working. Um, but again, <clears throat> nothing major. There's nothing to be concerned about. So that's where the INR is. Um, and like I said, I'll go back and check that next week. So that's really what's happened in this past week and a half, two weeks. Since I made the last video, so uh, again, just to kind of recap, that is, uh, you know, walking still great. I'm doing a couple of, of pretty solid walks per day. Um, that's you know one of the things that that's given me that morning walk is, is the um, the nice morning sunrises and, and things I get to watch, and so I enjoy those uh, and, and enjoy that time that I have um, you know, doing those walks. You know, work has been fine, working remotely, nothing really big there. Uh, virtually zero pain at all. Um, the only pain I have is just as I rework muscles, and that's not pain, that's more soreness. Uh, and then <clears throat> the um, the little bit of a the regular heartbeat, or, or I guess I'll say in wearing the monitor for a couple weeks. So those are the big things, and then, you know, I'll start rehab next week, and I'm excited and looking forward to that, uh, getting going, but... That's the last two weeks. And then to just a couple thoughts on the whole uh, two months. Uh, so like I said at the beginning, it, it feels like years ago that I had the surgery, and it feels like yesterday at the same point. And so much has happened in that two months that I think it's good um, for anybody going through recovery of any of these things is to sit and, and look and remember uh, all that, that you've kind of gone through because, you know, Sometimes days are hard. Uh, sometimes you string together a good week and then you have a bad day and it feels like a setback or you've done something. But if you can sit and really look at and appreciate everything that you've gone through, you can see such a, a, a steady rise, um, hopefully, in your recovery. I have and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but like I said, it, you know, from, from going in that morning to the surgery of just being the biggest thing I've ever really had to do <laughs> and, and nervous and, and going through it to waking up in my experiences with the ICU and then spending having to spend a week in the hospital because I, the, my NR numbers weren't coming up and battling a fever and the different things I've did there, the, the soreness, um, the coming home and the, the lack of sleep and just could not get comfortable and the pain, uh, trying to get that going to slowly starting to to really get out and walk um you know to you know appetite coming back and finally being able to sleep and lay in my bed and sleep and th you know, little things like the night sweats stopping so i can actually sleep better uh, and then being able to get out and, and walk um 
really however and wherever I want to. Uh, you know, I can walk up and down a hill, carry on a conversation with my wife and not feel winded. And that's within two months of, of you know, being on oxygen and the breathing tube and not being able to do anything. And, and those first few steps in the hospital being so painful that, you know, now there are really the vast majority of the time, I don't even realize anything is different until I stop, I hear my heart, and then I you know, don't pick things up or, or something like that. But it, it there's a lot that's happened in two months. Um, and, you know, I would encourage anybody that's going through this too. My kind of outlet is these videos because it's going to give me a video diary to go back and look at down the road. Um, you know, but pictures, um, take notes, write a journal because it really does help whenever you're, you're this far along. Um, knowing that you still have more recovery to do, but to, to look back and see what has gotten better. And so I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, again, it, it's, it's crazy to think it's been two months. Um, and I think that will continue to be there. And that marker will always be there for me that, you know, when I had that surgery, but, um, you know, it's amazing. I, I've had the opportunity since then to, um, walk with somebody I've met that through the same surgery. He's, he's celebrating his third week today. And so that's, you know, been great to be able to hopefully help and encourage somebody else along the way, because, uh, you know, that's what these videos are hopefully intended for is somebody else has been there that knows what this feels like and what, what you're going through. And so, uh, but that's been great to, to walk and see and hopefully encourage there. Uh, and, you know, I look forward to, to hopefully more opportunities to, to engage, um, with people one-on-one -on -one because this is such a big major life you know event um, and, and having someone there that's been through it to talk to uh, is definitely a, a huge benefit um, to have so hopefully I can continue to do that um, you know and again hopefully these videos help whoever sees this uh, what I'll say is it, it definitely gets better um, it's, it's hard. Um, there are days when you're just like, this was the worst decision I've ever made, but it gets better. So you just, you know, keep your head up, keep moving forward. Um, and you'll, you'll get to these milestones, these, these month, these two month milestones and look back and say, wow, uh, it's amazing what I've been through. Now I understand that there are other people that have complications and I'm not trying to say like, wow, look at me. Um, but, but this is what my experience has been, and this is what you know, I hope others uh, will have as well. Um, but this is what I can share because this is what I've been through. So, so really, that's it. So that's the two-month update. Um, I'll probably do a video next week just because I'll have a week of rehab under my belt. Hopefully, that'll uh, be as fun as I, I think it will be. And then, um, you know, if there's any updates on from my cardiologist or anybody on my uh, kind of irregular heart rate, I'll, I'll pop those in there too. But... But thanks for watching. Um, I'll continue to make these because I think there's there's plenty of milestones left to go. Uh, and if you're like me, you're very curious. Uh, if you're, you're pre-surgery and you're looking at this, is what does this look like three, four, five, six months, a year down the road? So uh, hopefully I'll continue to do these. And that's my plan. Um, it also gives me that out, like I said. So uh, check back next week. And uh, thanks for watching.